Hi all, let's look at this historical clash between Leela and Stockfish in tournament conditions with huge hardware for both sides. So the Chesscom Computer Championship, rapid rumble, 15 minutes with a five second increment. But uh, yeah, let's see what happened. D4 from Leela. We have Stockfish playing Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight F3, B6. And this looks like good territory for Leela because because in the uh, Alpha Zero match, if you remember against Stockfish Eight, there were some great pawn sacrifice games at a certain point with a D5 pawn sack. And for example, here instead of White Castling, there's the potential to play this uh, disruptive pawn sack with the idea of Knight H4, which many GMs have used with some great success sometimes to get into the F5 square. For example this continuation that hits h4 to the knight moves uh, can actually offer some interesting games and compensation generally so this position is interesting to consider it has a certain dynamic imbalance to it and uh, yeah stockfish stumbled stockfish 8 stumbled against alpha zero in that epic match with such a pawn sack now here uh leader actually castles and again, there's the opportunity here for d5, same sort of thing with the knight coming to f5, dynamic equality, unclear, as they sometimes say. So knight c3 though was played, and we're in familiar opening territory here. Knight e4 until this move. Now queen d3, slightly on the unusual side. Queen d3 from Lisa Leela, but it has been seen before. More common is bishop d2, for example, bishop f6, and black puts pressure with c5 on the center. So this continuation has been seen before. And even though black has the bishop pair, it's thought to be about equal, basically, this position. Or maybe white has a small edge. Uh, so anyway, Queen D3, slightly novel move, but has been seen before. So pressurizing the E4 square. Knight takes. Leader doesn't want any structural damage and plays Queen takes. Here we have D6. And the Queen actually returns to D3. We have support now for E4. That looks like the main intention, in fact, of Queen D3. But... Stockfish parries that, keeping things tight and with no real opportunity at the moment for white to do anything that amazing. Queen e3 hits the e6 pawn though. And here Stockfish plays queen c8, which is a kind of double move. It defends e6, but it also has purpose that it protects this b7 bishop, which could sometimes be uh, a tactical issue. So a very solid play from black. B4, we have bishop f6, bishop d2, e5. And this is exceptionally solid play for black because there's a great idea behind this e5 as well to try and put more pressure later with knight c6 to d4 to try and change the pawn structure favorably so that actually e2 could be put under pressure potentially. So fantastic stuff from both sides. D takes, D takes. Rook AC1 as though there's an idea C5. The rook is getting out of a firing line there as well, of course. But C5 looks like an issue. However, Knight C6 is played. C5 here doesn't seem to be uh, that big a deal. Leader played B5. If Leader plays C5 here, then it seems b5 may be one way for black to go to maintain a very solid position. Even this, it seems very exciting, but it just fizzles to equality, these lines. So, uh, yeah. And instead of knight takes, if bishop takes, we can throw in a check, then we can throw in that as well. But ultimately, this scenario uh, leads to an even position. So uh, we have b5 instead of c5, knight d4, and we have this structural transition now, knight takes d4. So uh, bishop takes, 
king takes, e takes, queen f3. Queen occupies that diagonal. So this pawn might be a bit of a concern sometimes. Queen e6, especially with queen e4 as an idea. Also, the queen's not, it's like another double attack really with the queen. So Stockfish has been playing very interesting clinical queen moves here. If c5, then actually black might nab this. This might actually be an issue. But maybe white can actually hold that. It's it's technically equal to my stockfish, even though uh, a pawn has been nabbed. But anyway, uh, Lila doesn't take that risk and plays a4. We have now uh, c5 being played. Because c5 might be on the cards here. Uh, for example, g6, c5 actually white's brewing something here and that c6 square might be useful for rook c6 later so again this is solid play from both sides uh, now this is really interesting because you might think a, a, a slow plan like a5 a6 to install a form pawn might be in order here with this diagonal it seems as though that's interesting but the thing is to bear in mind here this e2 is an issue uh, so leader actually took on c6 giving black some other issues to, to tackle immediately uh, if uh, a5 well let's let's say if rook f e1 as an example queen e4 a5 g5 black could end up being slightly better here look at the pressure on e2 uh, for example, this position, black could end up with a small edge, especially if white ever takes here. That's even better for black, and that's starting to look really nasty. So this kind of uncomfortable position is avoided really altogether with this en passant. Rook a c eight, and c five here. Rook takes. Now structurally, uh, both sides have isolated pawns. This rook seems quite active. There's a loose piece on d two. However, rook c5 hitting f5, black counterattacking on e2. Uh, we have e3. Yeah, if rook takes f5, then queen takes e2 is sufficient for equality. So e3. So now we have rook b2 countering on the bishop instead of defending that pawn. And now attacking the a pawn instead of defending uh, the f pawn. E takes, taking on f5, so temporarily pawn up. Bishop b6, but look at black's pieces. They're very active, coordinated. Uh, so it's a dynamic equality. This extra pawn doesn't mean anything here, it seems. H4, uh, we have a5. The queen plunges into b7. <laughs> Rook f7, so. That's the idea to look at g7 for a moment. That pushes the bishop back to defend g7. And now an exchange of queens. Yep. Uh, so nothing too exciting. In fact, sorry, we're at move 35 now. There was there was a, an interesting forcing sequence <laughs> earlier on. Instead of rook f4, by the way, you know when the rook was here. If bishop a3, you might that just gets knocked out with rook takes a3. I should have pointed that out. Yeah, Bishop A3 was an observation I'd made during the, 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 the stream. But anyway, no, Leela's not going to tactically plunder like that. Yeah, so let's go back. So we have this simplification. So Rook takes A4. So really, uh, the Tarash rule of end games is interesting, interesting to consider. The Rook should be behind the opponent's past pawns. So Leela kind of arranges that scenario. Here there is a threat of Rook takes E3. So the king makes sure the uh, bishop is not in grave danger. Just to put that on the board, bang, rook takes e3. Watch out for the tactics in, in end games, guys. So uh, here, looks fairly peaceful now. King does go to g4. This looks a bit scarily adventurous. King could have gone to g2, I believe, with, without penalty as well. The rook goes behind the pawn, so the Tarash are all. And I thought here this other rook could join in. Uh, but actually it doesn't. Lila locks down the king side for the moment. A little bit more. 
and here we see actually rook a8 uh, now rook e5 and it gets a little bit on the tedious side <laughs> where okay now both rooks joined to try and eliminate this pawn we have this check and now both rooks defend that pawn so double tarash rule <laughs> two rooks behind the pawn and yeah there's nothing really going on here we have a one pair of rooks coming off and it looks as though though to be fair though g7 could be an issue you know as a human you could slip up here and allow sometimes rook a7 hitting g7 but bishop d6 make sure that at least there's bishop f8 if that happened anyway this simplifies even further now uh, so instead of taking the pawn I mean this is just equal uh, we have actually uh, g4 and f3 okay so equal on pawns and now it's just pure tedium to, to watch on stream because Leela hasn't got a table base <laughs> installed and they can't just agree a draw. So, uh, okay, this is the game continuation. Yeah, okay, hang on. There was, a, there was a moment here, this committing to g5. It seems on the surface as though this could be scary if a king goes in there and there's a check. Isn't that dangerous? Well, not really. Black's in table base mode. Uh, it's just... And knows it's a draw. The check's can kick the king out at the right time to avoid getting mated and it did become a little bit on the funny tedious side watching this live and it just carried on and on and we're waiting for the f4 pawn break which happens here dragging the game on so move 102 <laughs> uh, f4 and then and then it carries on and on until here yep swapping a pair of pawns at move 116 and then Luna's technically got a pawn and thinks she's got an advantage but really it's just a total drawn position and it carries on and on and on and on <laughs> And yes, people were saying for me to deeply annotate these moves, but I don't feel there's a great need here, generally. And it even carried on in a raw rook and pawn ending. <laughs> yeah. There's a mate threat. How exciting. On move 166. But funny enough, the checks have parried that again. A mate for it again, parried by the check. Check. White is kept in check. Anytime white wants the mate, kept in check. 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 Anytime leader's going for the checkmate, there's a threat of mate here. Anytime leader goes for the checkmate. Well, okay, it's defended here actually. There's no there's no check there. Maybe that's actually a big that might not be a big problem to check on A7, but okay. This is this is played. And it just carries on and on and on. And this is how <laughs> Leela at least got one win from a disconnect. Anyway, it was finally agreed to draw by repetition here. So I thought I'd show you this this draw for the record, for historical record, because this is the first clash in, in tournament conditions between Leela 11089. So I'm hoping this is still Leela in its infancy and Leela can progress, but at the moment holding the kind of unofficial world computer champion to a draw the official one is Komodo, Komodo which Leela kind of drew on the position earlier in the year in the official world computer chess championship but ended up losing on time it was operator traditional operator tournament when operator has to put in the moves which is a great strain to be honest on the human operators in my view but um so in this competition yeah Leela held stockfish to a draw here so a good achievement I believe for this stage of Leela very very solid performance so far not losing any games and some great wins as well okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much